Hi, welcome to month one of the Stellaris Block of the Month program. This month we will be concentrating on templates. I know some of you, that's a dirty word. There's a lot of rotary cutting that can be done in this um, project, but it is also template based and it's very important how you get your accurate template. So we're going to just go through the basic steps. These days, many, many patterns are based on strictly rotary cutting your pieces. That actually is kind of limiting in many ways and you can get so many intricate and beautiful designs when the pieces do not exactly fit to rotary cutting dimensions. So that's when you need to use templates. So we're gonna talk about template uh, making, how you use them, what you do, and how you can also use them with a rotary cutter. First of all, you need a template material. It's usually some type of a plastic material um, that you can trace. Your pattern will have templates on it like this. You'll take the template film or plastic and you'll put it directly over the design in your pattern and then you'll trace all the markings. I use a permanent fine line marker to trace. You put a ruler down. You don't try to trace it by hand. Just put a ruler down and trace that line and transfer all markings to the template. The arrow indicates grain line. Now, some of you may not know what I mean by grain line, but it's important to adhere to this arrow. So for a grain line, your fabric, where the selvage of the fabric, where this legend is, is considered the straight grain. And if I pull that, there's no stretch. Uh, going the opposite direction, if you pull it, you do have some stretch. So along the selvage is called the straight grain of the fabric and across the other width of the fabric is called the cross grain. So the arrow on your template should fall either on the straight or the cross grain of the fabric. You don't want it to go on the bias because look at all this stretch on the bias. Some patterns you will be forced to have a bias, but there are ways that you kind of take that into account when you're sewing the pieces together. And we will be talking about all of that. Now, but there's template material and there's template material and there's a difference. So this is a plastic that we've used for years. And if you make your template out of it, and I put it down on this piece of fabric to cut my pieces out, you will notice it kind of, it's a little bit slippery. Either side, it's, it's kind of slippery. So we found, I did a lot of research and we found a new product. It's not actually plastic, it's a film that is slightly abrasive on both sides. And when you put it down, it, you know, it'll, if you work, work really hard at it, it'll slip a little bit, but it's not nearly, you can, you can see how, if I do the same amount of pressure, this one is moving a lot more. So either side is the same. And so I like that for one thing. So when you're holding your template down and marking around it on your pieces, um, it will stick and not slide as easily. There's something really good about this template film. And what that is, you can actually photocopy directly onto it. There's a big note on this. You can photocopy on it, but only with a laser printing machine. If you use an inkjet, you're just gonna get a smear of stuff all over. But you can put this on a laser photocopier in your laser printer. And if you've got a pattern like this with a bunch of templates on it, think of the time saving just to be able to put this film in your printer, print directly onto the film, as opposed to having to trace around every one of these, mark all the dots and so forth. Um, so that's a really special thing and it, a time consuming. And you've got to buy the template plastic anyway, so why not get this and do it directly on there? Now, one of the things I want to caution you about, however, most patterns where you're photocopying the design, and particularly mine, I always have this um, box on one of the pages of the pattern. This is, indicates two inches. So some photocopy machines or printers will print at a slight reduction or might enlarge it ever so lightly. So what you want to do is make sure that your printer is going to print the exactly two inches here. Now, rather than using 
a template film and ruining a piece of film, I suggest that if you're going to photocopy something, whether on the printer or on a copy machine, that you first make just a copy onto paper and check to make sure the gauge is right. If it's not, you adjust your machine, you know, either enlarge it by a certain percentage or reduce it until you get this exactly two inches. But better to waste a piece of paper than a whole sheet of template film doing that. So that would be my recommendation. So for me, for the most part these days, rather than sitting and painstakingly putting this over the piece and marking all the lines and everything, I will just photocopy it and cut the pieces out and it makes it so much easier. Now on some of my patterns uh, that or other people have or mine or whatever, you'll find that the, the big pieces that you need really large pieces. So in the case of this particular pattern, these two pieces, I've got template, it's a template C and here's a template C and you just butt those edges right up next to each other. You cut it according to the directions in that particular pattern and then uh, you just use a scotch tape. Make sure the lines and everything exactly match up and then put a piece of tape down and then I turn it over and do it on the other side as well. And now you've got your, your template piece to work with. So uh, that's really helpful when you've got the big long pieces because it's a, cumbersome to get it accurate. You need a bigger piece of template plastic and so whatever. And then when I'm ready to put them away, it just folds back on itself and I can stick it in the bag with all my other templates and it works out just fine. Okay, you will notice that on all the templates, you're gonna find dots in various places. These dots are either intersections of seams. They're places where um, you have to only sew to the dot or you join these dots to dots on another piece that we will do later. So these at the ends, the best way I think it with, for as many dots as we have to do is to use one of these 16th inch hole punch. It gives just the perfect size dot and you can just go and center it over and make those dots. So the purpose of these dots is to mark onto the fabric that you will be sewing. Now one of the tools that I like for this is the three-in-one sew line marking pen. It's got um, three different colors in it. So I'm gonna go to lead on this one. If I were, you know, if I was just marking the intersection and of course not the right side, you're gonna mark the wrong side. So if this was gonna be sewn to something, I just lay that along that angle and then just go through it with a dot. So you're going to want to mark dots on all the pieces when you cut them out that have these dots because they are very important down the line. Now it's, you're gonna find these are interesting dots. Why are, why are those here? They're, and what the purpose of those dots is to line it up. You'll see where there's some of these overlaps here on some of these things. You need to know where along this strip of fabric to put the point of this star. So that's why you need to mark all these dots. And you'll see, we'll talk about those as we get to them and actually do the sewing later on down the line. But it's, it's really important. And I think you, there's other ways you can get the hole in there. You can burn it with a little hot iron, but um, you know, like at the end of a needle and burn a hole in it, but it's really not as efficient. Uh, there's another tool that you can use for marking those dots. This is my perfect piecer tool and it has all the common angles that we use in patchwork. Um, and this is a 60 degree angle and it lines up right with this 60 degree angle right here. And it's got holes at the intersection. So that one would be for the 60 degree angle on there. Here you see laying it on there. And then this one is the other angle here. So if you didn't want to put holes in all your templates, if, it, if you've got the right angle, but something like here, you don't know where to go for the angle. So you're much better off, I think, for this particular one and working with the templates to have that 16th inch hole punch. It's gonna make your life a lot easier as we go to sew these pieces and get them all to fit together with just the straight lines that we talked about. So once you have your templates cut out, then you can mark around them on the fabric. Now. A lot of people at this point don't want to use scissors, they want to use a rotary cutter. So one of the things you could do, 
this template was like an odd size. It was slightly less when I measure it across the width. It's a little bit less than four inches, but not four and three quarters or four and seven eighths. So it's an odd size. So what I did was I just put it on a strip of fabric, lined my ruler up and cut this strip just the width that I needed of the template. And now if I wanted to cut this into pieces, I can put my template here and I can mark around it. I like this Clover Taylor's chalk for marking around templates. It shows up really well. It gives a nice line. You don't want to push down too hard, just ever so gently. And you can see that nice line. You can take the next piece and come up here and do another one. Ah. So I'm a kind of a late comer to rotary cutting and I've used scissors pretty much all my quilting career. However, um, if you don't, haven't used them, you need a good pair of scissors. And these clover scissors are my absolute favorite. They just cut right through the fabric as though it was melting. But now I know a lot, a lot of you are saying, but I like my rotary cutter. So you can take and put your ruler right along the line and do the same thing, just Sorry, this Quilter Select ruler has one side that's abrasive, kind of like the template film I was talking about. One side is abrasive, the other side slips. So when you're wanting to cut something, you just place the ruler along that line, and now it's going to not slip on you, and that makes it really good. So you just do that, and then you come over here, line it up here, and you can cut it this way. Then. If you don't want to even go through the part about cutting or marking the pieces, you could also just put your template on here. I'm going to turn it this way so I can get, you can lay your template on here. And because this ruler doesn't slip, and because my template film doesn't slip much, it, you can just lay this down. Make sure you're ever so slightly off the edge of the template because you don't want your rotary cutter cutting the template. But you can just mark and cut along your template and then cut the pieces out that way without doing the marking at all. So it's helpful to have some of this template film on hand. I, if I'm working on a pattern on my computer and I go, OK, I need the templates, I'll just print out a sheet of it. But um, if you want to be accurate, and what we've done for many of our patterns is print them directly onto the film ourselves, and then we sell the pre-printed template pack. So it, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's not that much more than buying the individual sheets yourself. And you know they're accurate, and you don't have to check for whether it's fitting that gauge and so forth. And this particular quilt has seven pages. I think it's seven, maybe eight of, of um, template that you have to do. So it's a lot of templates and it makes it so much easier than tracing them all directly onto plastic or even printing them out individually and hoping that they're all right. There's not much sewing to do for this month, but I'll show you what piece it is we are doing. There are seven compasses in the quilt and each one of them has these six little points in here. And that's what we're doing this month. You need 42 points all together for all seven of the compass blocks. And we'll look closely here to go through what you will be doing because there's a couple of different ways you can try it. Depending on the kit that you have, most of them have a directional fabric in at least one of these two pieces that you'll be sewing together. This is the little unit we're after. And we want these pieces to run the length of your strip. So follow the directions for cutting the strips in your uh, pattern that you've downloaded. And this is what we're after. Now we can do it two ways. In the template pages, you have template O. You can put that down there, mark around it the way I just showed you, either cut it with the rotary cutter with you know laying the ruler on top of it or marking it with a tailor's chalk, however you want. But it, you can get a lot of pieces cut out of just one strip by let me just go ahead and mark one so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I There's one piece, and then you um, turn it this way and get another one. And when you cut them apart, you just cut them right on the line. So you get a lot of pieces out of each one of those. And what we're needing is 42 of each. Now, the pattern instructions also tell you a different way to do it. And I will say it takes 
twice as much fabric to do it this way, at least twice as much, if not more. So if you're one of those people that doesn't mind um, wasting a little fabric to maybe make it a little faster, you can do it this uh, and the way I'm going to just show you. But if you're somebody who wants to conserve and have leftover pieces to try to make additional blocks, then you could do it by cutting individually because you will get at least twice as many pieces cut this way as you will doing it this way. So you'll see here we have the uh, pieces now. I've sewn them together on the sewing machine, two strips, and we have a different template that you can use for this. This is template N, and it's got a line across the middle, and you have to line that line up exactly with the line of the sewing line of sewing these two strips together. So you sew the strips, and then you just use this and, and cut the piece. You can mark it or use the rotary cutter like I just showed you, and then you cut them, but the next piece will come down like this, so you have all this wasted space in between every time by doing it that way. There's not a whole lot of homework this time. Um, just It will take a little bit of time to make all those templates and cut them all out, and cut the holes, punch the holes in them, and then you need to make those 42 points of the stars that I showed you. So, you got your work for this month, and we will see you next month.